Welcome to this series of video tutorials on the assessment standard evaluating statistical based reports. This is externally assessed and is worth four credits. What we're going to talk about in this video is an introduction to statistics and then we're going to talk about the different types of data and how we get that data. So starting off with an introduction to statistics. So firstly to learn about anything we must first collect information called data. And statistics come in when we have all this data and we need to learn lessons from it. So statistics is the art of learning from data. And this learning spans across so many fields. Statistics is used to learn about climate change from data on temperatures and weather patterns around the world. And it goes all the way to the All Blacks use statistics to learn about how to change their game plan in response to different teams. And there's a cycle of how this process works. It starts off with you have a problem, the question that you're wanting answered. And the next stage is planning. Planning if you're going to do an experiment or how to collect your data or the methods you're going to use, things like that. And then it's actually collecting the data, collecting the information, going out and doing the experiments. Now that you've got the data, you're going to analyse the data and then draw some conclusions about that. Analysis is more crunching the numbers and conclusions is what you can learn from those numbers. So statistics lets us analyse if data is significant. So if data is significant, that means that the outcomes that we've found or the numbers that we've gotten is probably not due to random chance. And if data isn't significant, then it's likely due to random chance. Because every time you conduct an experiment or gather data, your results could be due to random chance. So we make probability statements based on the data to see how likely it is that chance played a factor in it. So nothing is ever really proved. We just report the probability that similar results would occur if you repeated the experiment. So don't worry if you don't quite understand this at the moment. This is just an overview of what we'll cover throughout these tutorials. A statistical report is written based on the findings of the investigation. So it's just a report outlining all the conclusions and what was found. So in your assessment at the end of the year, you'll be given three reports that's similar to this. A bunch of text, maybe a table, and what you need to do is you're going to need to read these reports and then you're going to need to answer questions based on the report. The goal of all these tutorials is to give you the tools you need to be able to answer the questions based on the report. Now we're going to go on to the different types of data and how we get it. This doesn't come up very often in exams, so we'll go through it quite fast. So we'll talk about how we get data. There's two ways to gather information. There's data that you gather yourself through investigation in the field. Investigation in the field is a fancy way of saying you go out and get the information yourself. And this information that you gather yourself is called primary data. For example, if I go outside and count how many cars drive through a particular intersection in a day, that data will be primary data. Now the other way to gather information is to use information that's already been collected. And this is called secondary data. So someone else has gone and collected the data and you're using it. So for example, if I go to the Statistics New Zealand website to see the average household income, that's using information that someone else has already collected. I haven't gone out myself and asked every household in New Zealand what their income is and averaged it. Someone else has done that, so that's secondary data. So these are the two ways to gather information. Now there are three types of data. There's categorical data, which is data that can be divided into groups. So an example of this would be colours. Colours can be divided into different groups or categories. There's red, green, blue, yellow, magenta, burgundy, and the list goes on. But they're distinct categories. Another example would be emotions. There are categories of emotions. There's happy, sad, excited, lonely. Another one would be days of the week. That's categorical because there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're all very distinct. Now the next type of data is discrete data which is data that can have any whole number value. So that's 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, a million, any whole number value that doesn't have a decimal place. An example of this would be how many siblings you have. You can have one sibling, you can have five siblings, but you can't have one and a half siblings. So it can be any whole number value. Another example would be how many coffee mugs are in your kitchen. Do you have two mugs in your kitchen, three, four, five? You can't have one and a half mugs in your kitchen. So that's an example of discrete data. And that's different to continuous data, which is data that can have any numerical value in a range. Compared to discrete data, which has whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, continuous data can be any value between whole numbers as well. So that means it includes decimal places. So an example of this would be the length of a pen. It could be any value. It depends how good your ruler is. You could measure it to the nearest centimetre, to the nearest millimetre, to the nearest nanometer. 
so it's continuous data. Another example of continuous data would be the time to run 100 meters. It can be any value and how accurate it is depends how good the stopwatch is. But if we go back to discrete data, you can't have any value of siblings. They have to be a whole number value. So that's the difference between discrete and continuous data. So in summary of what we've covered in this video, statistics lets us analyze if data is significant, and it does this through probability statements. How likely is it to be due to chance? We covered methods of gathering data. There's primary data, which is data that you've gathered yourself, and there's secondary data, which is using information that's already been collected. And we've also covered the three types of data, Categorical data, which is data that can be divided into groups or categories. Discrete data, which is data that can have any whole number value. And there's continuous data, which is data that can have any numerical value in a range. So that concludes the introduction to statistics and data.